you may not know it, but you are an addict. In fact, almost everyone around you is an addict as well. There is something that you consume every day with a little thought. It is hidden in our daily schedule, our media, and it is marketed to us constantly. And without it, your life would be very different. Hi, my name is Rosie Block and I'm a senior physiology major at Michigan State University. After learning about substance abuse and addiction in my senior seminar class, I decided to tackle a substance that we consume almost every day in America, sugar. Today in this documentary, we'll be following the journeys of 13 participants, including myself. We will learn about why sugar is bad for us, how and why we are addicted to sugar, and the struggles of going sugar free. Curious to uncover the secrets of our addiction, I began to do the research. According to WebMD, it turns out that Americans average about 20 teaspoons of added sugar per day, compared to the recommended 6 teaspoons for women and 9 teaspoons for men. Not only that, but according to a study at St. Luke's Mid-American Heart Institute, it has been suggested that refined added sugars are habit-forming, just like cocaine, nicotine, alcohol, and tobacco. Now, everyone knows that sugar is bad for you, but some don't realize the effect it has on dopamine in the brain, the depletion of your mood, the rotting of your teeth, joint pain, aging skin, clogging of arteries, damage to the liver, kidneys, pancreas, and weight gain. Sugar is not only addictive, but it's a horrible substance to be addicted to. Thus, I got together with a group of my friends to vow to go sugar-free for at least a week and document their experience. This is our journey to no sugar. I'm most excited for this diet because I think it'll be a good challenge and I think it might give me the opportunity to make some lifestyle changes because sugar-free diets are much healthier, especially given uh, the fact that sugar is in literally everything that we eat, uh, especially here in America, so I think it'll be a good challenge. I think it's so easy to become addicted to sugar in America because it's in almost everything we eat and since processed foods are such a large part of the American diet, um, it's basically unavoidable. As I went through this process, you can see that it's in basically everything we eat and drink, there's added sugar. So you just naturally have more of it than you would have. Probably because there's sugar in everything that we eat. It was so hard finding stuff because sugar was everywhere, even where you wouldn't think it was. These all have sugar. Starting the diet was probably the hardest part. Just realizing that all the food in the house had added sugar, my friends and I had to make our way to the grocery store. The hardest about going sugar-free was actually just the unavailability of foods without any sugar added because foods that I expected at the beginning to not have any added sugar like like wheat bread for instance often did and that was that was really strange to me so I had to really go out of my way in order to find foods like that. I had to go grocery shopping for this diet and it was super hard looking at all the labels and making sure there wasn't any sugar in them. There were very few from Ed Meyer. Sugar has become a staple in the American diet. In fact, just the availability of added sugar alone has increased by at least 20% since 1977. Now, these sugars and fats account for over 50% of the energy in the typical American diet. Sugar in America, just because so many things have added sugar and like, there's soda everywhere and it's so cheap and available and like, just, just almost all the food we eat has added sugar if it's not like meat or a, or, or a salad or something. So I'm trying to shop for some peanut butter because I really want something that can actually hold me over that doesn't have sugar in it. And everything that's really cheap has sugar. So I guess I'll have to settle for this one. Now it was time to make our way home from the grocery store and begin our week-long journey of no sugar.
it's so hard to fit your lifestyle. So unless I was cooking every night, um, like I couldn't go out with friends and get food. Like every processed food here has sugar in it. And it was hard to eat out because all the foods that I would try to eat at restaurants also had sugar in them. Our bodies have evolved to seek out and consume sugar. Imaging and neurological studies have shown that the digestion of sugar releases natural opioids and activates the same dopamine mesolimbic reward pathways that many addictive substances do, like alcohol. The hardest part about going sugar free was avoiding cravings. Like every day, um, I was constantly craving sugar or feeling super hungry, and so it was hard to. Um, just like get past the cravings and have self-control. Uh, the first three days were incredibly difficult because I had never really said no to food before. So um, yeah, that definitely kind of stunk. Uh, especially realizing that cravings are like very real things. Was it pretty bad? Yeah, it's pretty bad. It was really bad. Mm -hmm. I think like the first week or two was like really bad. It was really crazy. I had like horrible headaches. I had like, I was in pain, like my stomach hurt. Um, like I was tired all the time. Like I literally just like laid down probably for like two weeks straight. Uh, about like three days in, I felt uh, quite a bit of withdrawal. Like, like I could tell that I had less energy, uh, like naturally just coming in from the amount of sugars I was intaking. Out of my 13 participants taking part in the week-long No Sugar Challenge, 60% claimed to break it due to either cravings or other health-related problems. Nevertheless, we persisted. Four of my participants made it the full seven days or farther and felt the positive effects of cutting sugar addiction. Several other participants, including myself, claimed that this would be something that they would try again. Um, I kind of liked how healthy I felt and I had to eat a lot much, like a lot more than I normally do, so it was kind of cool to be able to have that guilt-free snacking. Uh, I think my favorite thing about going sugar-free was actually just like how good I felt. Um, like all my life I struggled like sleeping and stuff and like all of a sudden I was like able to go to bed on time and like get eight hours of sleep and like wake up feeling like refreshed and like through the day I always felt like I always had energy like I'd never like lulled like after a meal or anything. 